What's up you guys? Daniel here. And I'm making this video because I've received a few comments from a few different people about the newest feature that Clash of Lords 2 has introduced with their new Sanctum building. And that involves glyphs, that involves ruminating, the whole Sanctum upgrading thing itself. Now I hope this helps anyone that's having questions about it. But let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so first I'm going to go ahead and show what you need to do to go ahead and get these glyphs. And as you can see, you can either spend souls, you can spend rings, you can spend mutagen. And the last option is what's called an orb of gleaning. Now, as of this moment in this recording, this video today, orbs of gleaning aren't actually in the game currently. But what they basically are, are if you think of talents and you think of talent refreshment beads, they basically serve the same purpose to go ahead and substitute using resources like jewels for talents but in this case to be resources so you don't have to use those and you can just use the orbs of gleaning and it basically serves that purpose gleaning does have five tiers one star all the way to five stars one star you won't really get very much you'll get greens you'll get a couple of blues if you're lucky you'll get exp glyphs maybe but I'll go into that in just a little bit. When you glean for glyphs, which is what it's called with spending resources for these shapes that you see on my right hand side, you'll start out with your very first time, you'll start out at the one star upgrade. At that point, if you press glean, you'll have a chance to jump up to the two star rating or just staying at where you're at right now. If you do jump up to the two star rating, then you have a chance at either staying where you are, going back down to one star, or going up to three star. Same applies for a three star. You have a chance of staying where you're at, going down to a two star, or going up to a four star. If you go down to a two star, the same rule applies as before. And if you go up to a four star, again, you can either stay at the same spot, you can go down to three stars, or you can go up to five stars. At the five star tier is where things get a little bit interesting. You have a chance to get what's called an ancient glyph, which is the highest quality type of glyph that you can get. It has the highest maximum level as well, and it has the highest rate of effect of whichever effect it has. And once you use that, you will automatically go down to a one star after that. And the reason they do that is so you can't just stick at the five star and then get a whole bunch of ancient glyphs or get a whole bunch of good rarity items but at each of those five rarities you can either spend rings souls mutagen or the orbs of cleaning there's no restriction on that i will say it does require a very large amount of resources to go ahead and get less if any worth at all so keep that in mind you're gonna need a huge quantity of resources if you want to get anything worthwhile out of these as you can see right now i do have seven golds and a few purples if you look on my left hand side you'll see these blue broken shard looking things what those are with the shopping cart above it what those are are little shards that you get with those one star to five star ratings in each one you have a chance to get what are called exp glyphs each EXP glyph has a color rating as well, and this ranges from green to blue to purple to gold, and then finally ancient as well. Each EXP glyph is worth double the amount of XP as the regular stat glyph, and it can be used just like an EXP egg like you normally use, but only for glyphs. For example, you can combo XP into one glyph and then combo that into another glyph. And that'll be the same thing. I will say one thing that I keep reading that's incorrect is that if you fuse your glyphs into just one and then you put that one on the hero that you can't actually upgrade it until you actually take it off. But that's actually incorrect. If you go to the hero in question that you want that, that the glyph is on and then go to the glyph tab, you can tap on the glyph, tap on imbue. And then you can combo any amount of glyphs into that one glyph as much as you want. You can also do what's called extracting a glyph, which would be taking 
that glyph off your hero so that you can go ahead and put another one on instead. That will use up one of your mana points. You have three mana points and based on the level of that sanctum building will determine how fast your mana recovers. At level one, you recover one mana every 24 hours or one mana every day. Normally, it's just perfectly fine for everyone. You don't really need anything quicker unless you get a whole bunch of glyphs if you're a top player and you just want to try things out. That's really the only reason why you would want to do that. But you can buy mana from Battle Square for badges. I would not recommend it. I personally think that's a waste. But hey, the option is there for you. You can choose it if you do want to. All right, but back to the EXP glyphs. Each EXP glyph will give a quote unquote random amount of EXP shards. These shards will be the little broken blue shard things you see on my left hand side just below the shopping cart. What you can do with that is if you have enough shards, you'll see six items in the shop. They'll be split into two sections. One, the quote unquote hot section, which will be the ones that you'll be aiming for. Don't ever buy the ones on the right. Those will have purples and those will have gold sometimes. Just don't ever buy them. They just won't have as good of an effect as the ones on the left. Now the ones on the left will be pricey. They will be gold for 7500 or they will be ancient glyphs, which will require a whopping 30,000 shards. Although ancient glyphs, since they do have a higher base stat buff, and they do have a higher maximum level. I would definitely recommend trying to save up at least the gold. If you can save up to an ancient, I would definitely recommend that. They're the best ones by far. They do cost a lot. I'm not going to say they don't. They do cost a lot. But they are the best in terms of stats. And that's why I would go ahead and definitely recommend them. You can also see the stats and view the buffs that a glyph would get in the shop. All you have to do is tap on it and then tap on the actual little shape that you see in there. And as long as you hold that down, you'll see the effect that that gives. Alright, now I want to go ahead and talk about each glyph. I'm going to go ahead and start with these five tiers of glyphs. The green, blue, purple, gold, and ancient. Each tier has a certain amount of glyphs that it includes. The higher level glyphs will include more glyphs and higher max levels for those glyphs. Like for example, for the green glyphs, there's 30 total glyphs. The highest shape are the square glyphs, and the highest level they can go up to is five. There is one other thing on the glyphs where each glyph has not only a tier rarity, which is the green, blue, purple, gold, and ancient that I've mentioned, but each glyph also has a white, a silver, and a gold rarity as well. Generally speaking, you only want to go for the gold and the silver glyphs. There are a few exceptions, which I'll get into later. But generally speaking, you only want to go for the gold and then the silver rarity. You can see the rarity on the little picture inside the shape. It'll have a gold tint. It'll have a silvery tint. Or it'll just be plain white. And that's how you'll know the rarity of the glyph as well. Alright, now on to blue. There's five more glyphs in the blue section than in the green. There's 35 total. In the blue rarity, the highest level of shape gets bumped up to an octagon, which is one level higher than a square. Its max level also increases with the highest level rarity of 10. And then at the blue level, that's when you unlock the gold rarity. And then we'll be moving on to the purple one. At the purple rarity, you unlock all possible glyphs. You also unlock the highest shape, which is the star shape. You also get another maximum level increase from 15 in the purple section to 20 in the gold section. And then for the final tier, the ancient tier, there's also 51. The highest level is also a star, but this one includes another maximum level increase. Whereas the gold one was level 20 at the most, ancient level glyphs have a maximum level of 30. And level 30 ancient glyphs 
can make a big difference on your hero. I will say low level glyphs, even if you have a few of them, that doesn't actually provide much of a benefit. The only time you'll be able to notice much of an effect is with a few gold glyphs or a few ancient glyphs on your hero leveled up to a decent level. At that point, that's when you're going to be noticing an actual difference in the way you attack and how fast you kill the heroes, how long your heroes stay alive, etc, etc. But right now, I just want to go ahead and jump into the effects of these glyphs. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the ancient levels just because that shows the full power and the full effect that you can get from these ancient glyphs. And I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to start with the star rarity for the ancient glyphs. This one is called Adept. It has an effect that halves your active skill cooldown. Now, you would be right with thinking that this is almost broken. Because you can do quite a few crazy things with it. If you've seen any of the videos on how powerful Pangoli is, if you were to put that star glyph on a Pangoli, you could, in effect, double the DPS that Pangoli would do, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Another good hero to use it on is Great Sage, because I know a lot of heroes and a lot of things have come out to shorten the time you get locked up and then to go ahead and negate skill locking. But with this Adept Star Glyph, you can go ahead and make your Great Sage great again. You can make sure that you can lock out heroes quite a bit better than you're doing right now. And pretty much a little bit better than how he was when he actually came out, though, in my opinion. In PvP, you can also use him with Wrath. Especially with the Instant Blast team skill. With that, you can basically render your opponent's team pretty much useless. And that'll help you win quite a lot more quite a lot easier as well. There are some heroes that benefit greatly from this as well, uh, but those are just two heroes that came to mind while making this video. Now this one's called Skullbesh. It kind of has a confusing effect, but basically what it boils down to is your attacks have a 60% chance to inflict stun for 6 seconds. The kind of confusing part is once every 9 seconds. What that means isn't that every 9 seconds that one attack has a 60% chance to inflict stun. What it actually means is that your attacks have a 60% chance to inflict stun, but once they inflict that stun for 6 seconds, then they won't be able to have that effect again until 9 seconds have passed. This is really good with a high attack rate hero like Ambrosia or Skull Mage. Once again, this really helps with PvP modes like Battle Square and Colosseum. Not so much with Colosseum because they do have Enchantress Aids, but it really helps with Battle Square. It'll also help with high attack rate heroes like an Abyss, an Ambrosia, uh, just heroes like that in Guild Clash as well. Because it would really help with stunning the enemy heroes so that you have more time to kill them, especially combo with the Toxic Shaman skill. Alright, but we're on our third one. This one's called Chaotic Infusion. This one does somewhat of a dot damage similar to a slower fire bombs effect in Colosseum. It says attacks deal 10% of targets max HP as additional damage once every 6 seconds. What that means is like say you have a hero that does 20,000 attack. Each hit that you deal to the enemy hero will do 20,000 damage provided there is no damage reduction. With this effect if your enemy hero has 1 million health, then once every 6 seconds, on top of the 20,000 damage you're going to be dealing to their hero, you're also going to be dealing another 100,000 damage at that point in time. So you're going to be doing 120,000 damage in that one hit every 6 seconds. Now this would change based on the hero you fight. The more tanky of a hero you fight, Obviously, the greater effect that you'll see and the higher number that you'll see, this can definitely be used effectively. I would go ahead and recommend going for the other Star Glyphs, especially the first one, Active Skill, Max Cooldown. That is a... That is really a game changer. That really is. 
All right, but now we're on our fourth one. This one's called Life Drinker. This, in my opinion, is the second best glyph in the game, only overshadowed by the active skill max cooldown divide by two glyph that we discussed at the first glyph. What this is, is basically a free abyss demon skill that you don't have to waste any rage on. Yeah, you heard that right. A free Abyss Demon skill that you don't have to waste any rage on. Every single hit that you deal, just regular attacks will heal you for that much damage. The greatest impact that I can see is, for example, an Ambrosia. With her insight, it increases her attack rate so much, and especially if you put a blockhead aid on her, she'll be practically unkillable. I dare say she will be unkillable, with a blockhead aid, max insight, this glyph, and a thunderblade. That comboed with the berserker aid, I don't know if you would actually be able to kill her, realistically, within a reasonable amount of time, I mean. This is one of the best glyphs in the game. I would definitely, definitely recommend using it if you are lucky enough to get one. That is a worthy glyph to get by far. Alright, now we're on Calamitous Blood. This one, if you receive damage, then this procs, which is a little bit weird in the way it works. But the way it works is once your hero receives damage, then whichever hero that dealt damage to your hero will have their damage and attack rate reduced by 60% for 10 seconds. It doesn't state it explicitly, but what I can tell about this glyph is it would proc every 10 seconds. So I would assume that this would be a constant glyph since it doesn't have any cooldown timer like some of the other glyphs do. But anyways, this is another one of the extremely good glyphs. I would probably say this is the third best glyph after the skill cooldown reduction and the free heals. This one gains invincibility for 6 seconds after using an active or divine skill yes it has a cooldown of 12 seconds invincibility is the only thing that can't be countered in this game so far so the fact that you're getting six free seconds of invincibility just for using an active or divine skill you can use either one and you'll get free instant six seconds of invincibility that's one of the best glyphs in the game definitely i would recommend Going ahead and working on that one as well, if you are lucky enough to get one. We're now on our hexagon shape. This one's called Shake Off. It reduces stun duration by 80%. Basically, your hero won't be stunned, which will get your heroes back in the fight. This is another really good glyph. But just, of course, not as good as the other star glyph. This one is like the one before. This one's called Chatterbox. It reduces silence duration by 80%. Basically, it reduces the skill lockout time from a wonton or a great stage. And I'll go ahead and reduce that by 80%. That really, really helps as well. If you're having trouble in hero trials, this can help with that. Or if you're having trouble with Colosseum or Battle Square, this can also help quite a bit. Since the opponent hero thinks that since they've locked out your hero, that the hero is useless now. But no, no, no. If you have this, you can get them back into the fight. Alright, now we're on Rejuvenation. This one heals 6% of max HP every 6 seconds. Don't invest into this. This is a trash glyph. This is a really trash glyph. This is basically a landslide aid. There's a reason people don't run landslide aid. There's much better aids. The same applies for this glyph. They're going to need to buff this glyph if they want people to use this glyph. This is a trash glyph. Do not invest into it. Alright, now we're on Minion Mastery. This increases clones HP by 100% and damage by 60%. In my opinion, this isn't really that great of a glyph. At low level, if you don't have anything else, I suppose this could be useful in guild boss if you run Chiron with that. Or maybe in battle square, this could be useful since they don't have aids. To go ahead and double its HP. But generally speaking, I, I wouldn't recommend investing into it. I personally think this glyph is a waste. 
I think your glyph XP is better used into other glyphs. This one's called Diffusion. It deals an additional 100% damage against clones. Now this glyph will be an amazing one in Guild Boss, especially for the people that can't deal with a Wednesday Guild Boss clone. This will help them so much. This will allow them to actually kill the clone and actually get higher Guild Boss scores. If you're struggling in the Wednesday Arcane Elder Guild Boss, and you have this glyph, definitely level this up as high as you can. And that'll help you dramatically in killing that clone so you can get back to the regular, real guild boss there. Aside from that, it's not really that useful. Because Chiron clones aren't really that tanky. I mean, you might find some people that use the previous glyph that increases the clone HP by 100%. But I don't, I don't imagine a lot of people would run that. So if you're not using this... For guild boss to destroy the Wednesday Arcan Elder guild boss clone, I wouldn't waste my resources in investing into this one. All right, this one is a really, really strong glyph. This one is also tied for third, maybe fourth, but I think it's tied for third. It deals an additional hundred percent damage against buildings. Let me repeat that: it doubles your damage against buildings what makes this glyph so good guild clash doubles your damage in guild clash especially if you combo this with an ironclad aid it's going to triple your damage in guild clash triple your damage in guild clash i don't feel i need to say more all right this one's called blaze of glory this one, I'm not really a fan of, but I can see how it can be used effectively. I just wouldn't invest into it myself. But it deals 800% attack damage to all surrounding enemies on death. So for example, if you put this on a high attack hero, and it's surrounding a lot of enemy heroes, and then they manage to kill your hero, it would deal a large percentage of their HP as damage, and possibly kill them. Now this won't really be much of a threat at high level because Berserker A's are a thing. But at mid tier and at low level, I could see this definitely being used. But at high level, this wouldn't be very effective. It really wouldn't because it's just one burst. It's not dot damage. So this wouldn't be a good glyph at high level. Now this one, even Oz, is quite an interesting glyph. That hero that you have it equipped on. Gains a shield that absorbs 500,000 damage whenever HP falls below 40%. It does have a cooldown of 30 seconds. It's basically a backup Berserker raid. And it basically does what a Dark Rider or Divine does. Or a high level Enchantress skill does. It basically creates a secondary health bar for your hero. The reason why it's not so good is because... While your hero may have a Berserker Raid, that shield does not have a Berserker Raid. It doesn't have any form of damage mitigation. So that 500,000 damage, while well, it may sound like a lot, isn't actually that much. Because you have to think about it. This is at level 30. At a level 30 Ancient Glyph, you're probably going to be fighting high level heroes. And those high level heroes are going to have high level equipment. So this glyph with 500,000 health for that shield, while it may sound like a lot, is not really that good. Especially since you have to wait until your hero falls below 40% and you have to wait 30 seconds before it actually procs again. Now don't get me wrong, this can be used at high level. It's just I feel that there are better options for the Hexagon shape. Now this next one, Defiler. It's basically a Rolling Fiend aid and a glyph. You remember how we just found Landslide aid as a glyph? This is Rolling Fiend aid as a glyph. This glyph is actually good though. What it does is attacks your hero does. It reduces the HP recovery for them by 70% for 10 seconds. And the cool part about it is it happens once every 10 seconds. So it's basically a constant. HP reduction 
of 70%. So it's in effect like a Wolvenfiend aid or like a Toxic Shaman skill bubble. If you combo that with a Wolvenfiend aid or you combo that with a Toxic Shaman skill or you combo that with any other way of reducing damage like for example Ambrosia skill or anything like that. Let's just say you're probably going to win the battle because they won't be able to heal. Alright, this next one, Below the Belt, it increases damage against targets with more than half health by 60%. This one, in normal use, I don't see being that great. Because once they fall below 50%, the effect is going to just fall off. What I can see this being used well is based on how Guild Boss is coded. This might actually work, or the next one might work instead. But based on how it's coded... It might be more than 50% HP, which in that case, this one will work. But if it's coded as less than 50% HP, then the next one would have to take effect. And this is the next one with the same thing, except it's less than 50% HP instead of more. And that's what I was talking about with the guild boss, about whether or which one it was coded as. Alright, we've seen a similar one like this, debilitate. Except this is, instead of after receiving damage, this is after dealing damage. What it does is... Reduces target's hero damage and attack rate by 60% for 10 seconds after dealing damage. So they're going to have a massive reduction in the amount of damage they can deal, as well as the attack rate as well. So if you're fighting an Abyss Demon, that Abyss Demon is dead. If you're fighting an Ambrosia, that Ambrosia is probably dead. There's a lot of heroes that basically kills the hero, essentially. As long as you have other competent heroes to deal with that hero. This one is quite an interesting glyph, in my opinion. It increases the attack rate by 100%, basically doubles it, for 10 seconds after using an active or divine skill, and the cooldown is 10 seconds. With the cooldown being 10 seconds, it's basically going to proc every single time you activate your skill, because most skills have a 15 second cooldown timer, and with a 15 second cooldown timer, and this happening every 10 seconds is basically going to be a guaranteed 100% attack rate boost. This is going to be amazing, once again, for a high attack rate hero, like a Skull Mage, like an Ambrosia. This can help quite a bit in DPS modes like Guild Boss, um, even Battle Royale. It'll be amazing at Battle Square as well. There's a lot of uses for this glyph. It's a very good glyph in my opinion. I would definitely recommend investing into it if you actually get this glyph. Now this one is called Firm Footing. It is a counter to Ravager skill. It's a counter to Demon Slayer Divine. It's a counter to a few different things. It's more of a situational glyph. I would regard this as a waste of investing resources into. I would not invest into this one at all. This one's similar to the previous one where it counters pull effects, but this one is for knock back and knock away, basically a counter to Pangoli. This one, Recruit the Elite. This increases mercenary base attack and base HP. This one is a mixture of both worlds. For example, if you want to deal a little bit more damage in Battle Royale, but your mercenaries don't live long enough, you can go ahead and put this one on there, and that'll help your score. I would recommend using this one on maybe like a sharpshooter team because the sharpshooters don't really have that much HP. Now this one is just like a stat buff. It has an attack damage reflection of 25% and skill damage reflection of 26%. Personally, I think that's just something that they coded in just because they could. They copied it from equipment. I wouldn't really waste a whole slot on this, but if you want to, by all means, go ahead. It's not exactly a bad glyph. This one is a pretty decent glyph. It does give your hero 10,000 extra attack and 250,000 extra HP. That can provide quite a nice boost. So this is definitely a solid glyph in my opinion. This next one, Spring of Life, increases your HP recovered by 60%. This is also the counter... Some of the other stuff in the game, including glyphs, which reduce your HP recovery. This kind of helps mitigate that. One amazing 
used for this glyph is if you put it on a woven beam with an ambrosia aid, let's just say wolf being broken has a whole new meaning. Now this one, mercenary skill damage reduction, the only possible reason I can see of using this glyph is in arena, just so your mercenaries won't get one shot. That's really the only possible reason, only good reason I could come up with this glyph. Otherwise, it's just a waste. This next one, Recruit the Guarded, it ties in with the one I just mentioned, except it's, it's regular damage reduction. It's not for active abilities. This one, Mercenary Base HP plus 300%, so it quadruples the base HP for your mercenaries. Once again, this could be used with Sharpshooter team. Sharpshooters are generally very weak. So if your sharpshooters aren't living very long, go ahead and put this on. That'll help them live basically the entire fight. So that way you can be dealing all the damage that you're supposed to be able to be dealing. This isn't a bad glyph, but it's not a good glyph either. This is a godsend for wizards in Battle Royale. Just look at that. Mercenary base attack plus 150%. So it more than doubles the base attack. It multiplies it by 2.5. Yeah, let's just say the billion barrier in Battle Royale is going to be broken soon. This is an amazing glyph. It doesn't look, really look like it, only 33%, but it's an amazing glyph. It increases the dodge rate by 33%. If you combo that with dodge talents, if you combo that with the wanton aid, if you combo that with enchant skills, if you combo that with equipment, this adds up fast. Right now, without any glyphs, with maxed out Rene Ven, a level 25 enlightened Rene Ven, with a plus 3 gold heart, max talents, max enchants, max wanton aid, everything, it comes out to 101% to dodge rate. Now you won't see that because enemy heroes have hit rate, but if you combo this glyph into it, and then the enemy heroes don't have enough hit rate to counter that, basically your hero is going to be living quite comfortably for a very long time. Alright, now this is the direct counter to dodge rate. The only reason I would recommend using it is if you notice somehow that the heroes you're fighting actually are equipping that dodge rate glyph, then I would recommend putting the hit rate glyph on it, but otherwise it's kind of a waste in my opinion. This one, attack damage reflection plus 50%, this could be good. It reflects 50% of the regular damage that enemy heroes do to your hero. It can be used pretty effectively. Uh, for a square slot, it's a pretty good choice, although I would recommend a different square glyph than this one. Now we're on our final square glyph, skill damage reflection plus 50%. This is a lot better than it seems actually, because there's quite a few high damage hits, like a wanton divine, wanton skill, great sage skill, pangoli skill. There's a whole bunch of high damage hits, and so greatly help with dealing with those enemy heroes especially comboed with an Aegis. Now this one is just like a stat boost. Kenai increases crit rate by 16.5%, increases crit damage by 25%. If you want to go ahead and invest into it, by all means go ahead. There's better glyphs though. Another one, hero damage plus 25%, hit rate plus 16.5%. This is a less useless hit rate. If you want a little bit of hit rate, go into this one. In my opinion, the 33% hit rate is unnecessary. You just need this one. Plus, with extra 25% damage, that's all you really need. All right, this one is an amazing glyph. There is some confusion about this, even though IGG has released an official statement on their Facebook page. But basically what it does is, if you think about what a Tyrant's Brand does, is it has an 80% chance of ignoring a Berserk Raid, Ignoring damage reduction, ignoring anything that the opposing hero might have for skills and divines. What piercing attack does is it has that percent that you see, 
that percent chance of ignoring enemy hero damage reduction and berserker A's and all that stuff for regular hits. So it's basically the missing half of a tyrant's brand. Basically what makes it so good is if you put this glyph on a hero that has tyrant's brand, essentially at a plus three gold tyrant's brand and a level 30 deadly blows, let's just say they're not gonna be alive for very long. This heavy swings attack damage plus 50% is a solid choice it really is it basically multiplies your attack damage by 1.5 it adds another 50 percent that really helps out quite a bit if you have this one i would definitely recommend going into it but if you have another one you can rather choose this glyph is still a solid choice heroic finesse skill damage plus 50 percent IGG done messed up with this one. Kengali will most likely return back to how he was when he first came out. It grants an additional half of that skill damage back on to the Pangoli skill. This also works with Great Sage skill, of course, Wonton skill and Divine, of course, any high damage hero in a single hit. This is just broken. That's an amazing glyph. I don't know why this is only a white rarity, but it is. This one, crit damage plus 50%. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you're going for a crit build, get it. If you're not, don't. Same rule applies. Crit rate plus 33%. If you're going for a crit build, get it. Otherwise, don't. Heroic Might. Hero damage plus 50%. Another solid glyph. Another nice stat boost to your hero. This one, Heroic Strength plus 20 thousand extra attack that's insane what you want to do is you don't necessarily want to put it on a hero with a lot of attack you generally want to spread it out on a hero with a low amount of attack skill damage plus 25 percent mercenary skill damage reduction plus 35 percent this is a mixture of uh, skill damage plus the arena glyph which is what i'm calling it don't don't invest into this Plus 35% is nothing. It won't help you in arena. Just trust me. It won't, it won't provide enough to help you in arena. And that basically cuts out half of the effectiveness of this glyph. So it's 25% damage. 25% skill damage buff. Don't invest into it. It's a trash glyph. This is another stat based glyph. Crit resist plus 16.5%. Crit damage reduction plus 25%. This is rather a pointless glyph. At this point in time. Maybe if they make Dijuni good and they make a bunch of crit heroes good, this might be a good glyph. But right now, this is a garbage glyph. The next one, hero damage reduction plus 25%, dodge rate plus 16.5%. If you want the best of both worlds, you want damage reduction and dodge rate, go with this one. In some cases, it can be better than full on dodge rate. In some cases, it can be better than full on damage reduction. It's just up to personal preference, really. Now this one, block attacks. This is also another confusing one, in that it doesn't state it, but IGG has also released this official statement on their Facebook page about this as well. But when you equip this glyph on your hero, if your hero receives damage, it has that percent chance to add damage reduction onto your hero. Now, what percent damage reduction? We don't know. For a level 30 ancient glyph, it has a 70% chance to add damage reduction onto your hero if it gets hit in my opinion until we know the actual percentage of the damage reduction that gets added on i would just leave this in your glyph vault i wouldn't waste xp into investing into it because we don't know enough about this glyph to say anything all right the next one heroic resilience this one gives a skill damage reduction plus 50 percent this is generally an okay stat boost I would recommend shying away from this one. He can be used, but there are better glyphs, even for the circle ones. Alright, the next one, crit damage reduction plus 50%. Trash glyph. It's really a trash glyph. Same goes with this one, crit resist plus 33%. Another trash glyph. Once again, if IGG makes crit an actually viable strategy by Dijini and a bunch of other heroes, then maybe this would be good, but not right now. Alright, now we're on our second to last one. Hero damage reduction plus 50%. This is generally a solid choice. Invest into it if you want to. It's not a game breaker, but it's a good solid choice. 
Now this one is quite a good glyph actually, because it increases your hero HP by 500,000. At maximum effect, for a landslide, maximum light and landslide, it can create a 2 million HP landslide. But just like the attack glyph that I was mentioning, the goal isn't exactly to put it on a high HP hero, it's to go ahead and put it on a low HP hero. That way that low HP hero will actually live. Like for example, if you put it on a Pangoli, that helps the Pangoli live. Normally, Pangoli is only useful in Battle Square for skill and divine. And maybe another skill after that. After that, your opponent is going to target the Pangoli and is going to die. With 500,000 extra HP, it might be able to actually live until the next skill, especially if you combo that with the star uh, active skill cooldown reduction glyph. One thing you can do is in the shop, right above the blue shard things, you'll have an option to buy glyphs. And the way you buy it is with the EXP shards that you get from EXP glyphs. Once you collect enough, you can buy it. Purple glyphs cost 1500. Gold glyphs cost 7,500, and ancient glyphs cost 30,000. I know, this is very expensive. It's going to require a whole lot of resources. It really is. But if you see the four squares on the right, generally you do not want to invest into those. Those will generally have lower quality glyphs. What you want to invest into is the left side, the two ones on the left side. Now, these ones won't be more expensive than if they were on the right side so you don't have to worry about that because in a lot of modes within Clash of Lords 2 the quote unquote hot items are more expensive but thankfully that's not the case with these with these glyphs you can go ahead and tap on it without having to fear about actually having to spend it and then you go ahead and be able to see that glyph just tap and hold on that picture and you'll see what the glyph actually does and based on that, you'll be able to decide whether you want it or not. Once again, you can go back to the album, you can go ahead and reference, see which glyph is a good glyph, which glyph is not a good glyph, which one works for you, which one doesn't work for you, and so on. In my opinion, don't ever spend on the purple glyphs. I know it's going to take forever to get the gold glyphs, but I would only recommend buying the gold glyphs or the ancient glyphs if you can actually save that much. The reason being is that if you were to buy the purple glyph, you'll be using 1500 shards. Once you max out that purple glyph, you can't bring it any higher. The only way to bring it higher is to combo it into a gold glyph. And then at that point, you'd be spending another 7500 or another 30,000 for an ancient glyph even. That's why I'd recommend only doing a gold glyph or only doing an ancient glyph. It'll help you out tremendously in the long run. Another thing I want to touch on is rumination. What this does is every hero will have the first slot unlocked for their hero. Usually it'll be a triangle, sometimes it'll be a circle, but for every hero that first top slot will be unlocked. The way you unlock more slots for more glyphs is once you tap on the Sanctum building, you can tap on Ruminate, and that'll bring you to this screen. At that point, you'll see lines going from that first top glyph to other glyphs. And those ones that are connecting to, you can tap on it, and then you can tap on Ruminate, and that'll start a timer. Once that timer is over, you can go ahead and put any glyph that you want that matches that shape into that slot. You can also pause rumination. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can pause it. You can speed it up with special hourglasses that you can get by purchasing the packs in the shop, or you can buy them by spending badges in Battle Mall. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think that's a waste, but you can do it if you want. After rumination is done for that hero, you can go ahead and go to farther and farther down ruminations to get better and better slots. Each one of those shapes that you ruminate, except the top one, has to have your sanctum be a certain level. 
if you want to get the second level, you have to, have to, have to have your Sanctum at level 3 or higher. Different heroes will have different requirements for the different glyphs. The only two things that remain constant for all heroes is that the first glyph will always be unlocked and then the star glyph, which will be at the very end, will always have a level of 25. Now I will say, leveling up the Sancta building requires mutagen instead of gold and it requires time. Now this time can actually be sped up by speed scrolls, which is really nice. But with the mutagen cost, this adds up quick. To get it to a level 25, which is the max level for a star glyph, it requires over 80,000 mutagen. And then just to get it 5 more levels to a max out, it requires over 131,000 mutagen. If you think that's crazy, it's because it is. But I digress. Alright, I do really want to thank you guys for watching. I know this was a really long video. I hope I helped you guys out. If you had any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. I'll get back to you, try to help you out. I do want to go ahead and self-promo. I do have a Discord server set up for Clash of Lords 2. If you do want to join, the link is down in the description below. Again, I know this was a long video, but I hope it helped everyone out. I want to thank you guys for watching, and have an awesome one. Peace.